Excel accounting practice problem. Create accounting worksheet part number one. Get ready because we're about to excel with Excel. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. We're going to be creating our information in a blank worksheet. So you don't need anything special to move forward. However, if you have access to this Excel workbook, you will have two tabs on down below. One being an example tab, the second being a practice tab, the example in essence being an answer key. If we go to the example tab, this is what we will be creating. It could look a little bit intimidating. I'm going to scroll into 130 on the view to make it a little bit larger, but we're going to do this in a step-by-step -step process. If you're able to construct this worksheet, then you'll have a much better understanding of how the accounting process will work. We're going to be constructing then on the left-hand side, the data input where the journal entries would go. This would be recording the normal transactions. We're going to then make our chart of accounts. We're going to try to color code it, practicing our Excel skills in order to do that for the formatting purposes. And then we're going to put in our balances, which are just going to be hard-coded numbers to start out. So this is going to be our beginning balances. Then we'll have our entries column. We're adding the entries column so that we have that nice transparent look to see our beginning balances and then our entries as we test transactions in the future part of the practice problem. Then we have the ending trial balance, which is just the sum of these two columns. Then we have the general ledger. The general ledger is going to be giving us the information per account but it's going to be given it by date. Once again, we'll color code it, the general ledger tying into the trial balance, which will become more apparent as we construct this thing in a step-by-step -step process. The general ledger, of course, is a huge uh, item, so that'll take us a while to construct. And then we've got the accounts receivable sub subsidiary ledger. We'll talk about later the accounts payable subsidiary ledger. And then, then we'll get to the inventory subsidiary ledger, and so, and, and next we'll get to the actual financial statement. So it's a comprehensive type of worksheet. We're going to break it down in a step-by-step -step process and say, okay, why are each of these components necessary? We're going to start off with basically this and then this component with the trial balance. So let's go over to the practice tab. Once again, we just have a blank tab here. So that's where we're starting. I'm going to increase the size of it. So I'm just going to basically bring it up. I'm holding down control to 130. So the first thing I'll typically do is format the entire worksheet to the to the general format that I would like to see with regards to the numbering. To do that, I'll select this triangle up top, or you can say Control A to select the whole thing. Right click on it. I'm going to say format the cells. Let's format all the cells. I like to go to currency down below, and then I'm going to go to to not the red brackets, but just bracketed in black, so I can color code some of my numbers as I choose. If I put the red there, they'll turn red when they're negative and I don't want them to do that. I'm not gonna have any dollar sign. I'm gonna remove the decimals. So there we have that. And so that's gonna be our general numbering. So if I put a number in here, it's got no decimals and there it is. I like to have it bolded. So I bolded the entire worksheet too, as you can see. So we have an emboldened type of worksheet. Then